Maverick Auto Dromas Hermanes Rodriguez is a little space of tranquility in what is the world's third largest city. The public park is a haven for cyclists and a mecca for racing drivers, but the principles are the same. Avoid the curbs at all costs. If you don't, there are some beautifully carved walls just waiting to etch themselves into the car. A bumpy surface and the endless for the a very physical and demanding track. in the running start for the sprint race. Lots of action coming into turn one. You must stay off the curbs in one. You must stay off them in two. And you've got to stay off them in turn three. Which then leads on to a shorter straight. And you build up speed once again. Which leads up to the entry into turn four. Late breaking into turn four. Into third gear. But then you have to change down into second. So as you get the speed off to take turn five. That's the tight turn to the right. Short sprint, second gear, third gear, up to turn six, the hairpin bend. It's really a two-part corner. You try to make it a single corner. From here, you go into the sequence of lefts and right that comprise the S's. Difficult to place the car accurately. It is bumpy. Lots of shake in the steering wheel. Lots of shake in your body. Building up speed progressively until you get to turn 11, then you get into fourth gear. And the final two corners of the S's culminating in turn 13, the quickest of them all. And then it's on to the final back straight, which leads up to the notorious Peril Tada corner, which used to be a seven degree bank corner, but now is much flatter. Difficulty in this corner is you can't see the exit. There's now a baseball stadium in the inside of the corner. Hug that white line and then free the car up on the exit, and you've completed another lap here in Mexico City. And there is the track looking resplendent in the sunshine, some 4.4 kilometres, two and three quarter miles. But as we've already mentioned, we are at altitude here. And Simon Hill can tell us more, find out more about the effect on the engine. Simon. Yes, Ben, down here with Phil Lord from Zytec. Phil, obviously a, a fantastic circuit, but it does create a very different set of circumstances for you guys on the engine side. Correct, that's right, yeah. We, we've come to this circuit first time in, in a one history, and uh, we've... Uh, we, well aware at the beginning of the time that we, the altitude here would be a, a sap of performance on the engine and by the normal laws of physics the engine will lose at this altitude something like 25 percent of its power due to the reduced mass of air uh, and reduced, reduced mass of uh, fuel through the engine at this altitude uh, we've got uh, compensation in the maps for that but we can't make up the power that, that the air doesn't can't support so that's the, uh, that's the that's the laws of physics we're going to lose uh, a little bit of drag on the cars, but nothing like 25% that the engine power loses. So the cars will be slower, unfortunately, but equally matched. Yeah, I guess drivers being drivers are always going to moan about never having enough power because that's what racing drivers do. But with Zytec, obviously, you map the engines to make them as equal as possible. Um, but from a driver's point of view, I'm sure they're all coming in and saying, I've got no power, where's it all gone? There's been some comments this weekend about that, engines, engines down on power. And obviously, there's comparisons made between cars. Uh, we have to, as Zytec, be quite sort of uh, separate from that and, and look at it as a global view. And we look at gear ratios and make the decision based on that, whether we answer the the, the claims against engines down on power with a uh, with a change but we don't change any car any individual car we change all cars across the board and that's what we've been working on this weekend thanks for your time phil you're welcome thank you very much simon and uh, doing a great job the reliability of these a1 engines provided by zytex has been astonishing really over the two seasons so far john yes in fact the engine that i use in the car i do my uh, last track back slap in the car for a year and a half because it's uh, it is a spare car but uh, great reliability and a great durability of those V8 engines. Interesting listening to Phil, the feeling of driving a car here at altitude is, it is extremely noticeable. When you put your foot down in second gear in a tight corner, ordinarily you would expect to have a power slide in the exit of the corner. So much is the power, but principally the torque of the engine, but losing up to 25% of the overall performance. It is only when you drive the car that you actually can fully understand how big a loss we're experiencing. But seven and a half thousand feet is, I think, about as high a racetrack that I'm aware of, uh, certainly at the highest we'll go to an A1 GP. Well, we have some uh, new young fans, I'm glad to say, here at Mexico City, uh, ready to enjoy A1 GP. But the A1 GP drivers, in contrast, have been enjoying Mexico City. Let's see what they've been up to earlier this week. 
dry desert air and the famous cactus, symbols of old world Mexico. So we took our very modern drivers for some good old fashioned fun. Like that? The art of rodeo and cowboys goes back hundreds of years, but this is a skill which is still practiced and taken very seriously in this part of the world. Whilst the drivers are used to containing 550 brake horsepower, restraining these horses was no easy task. These cowboys are some of the best in the business. Unlike these guys, it's obvious driving is their forte and not lassoing. And try and try as they did, it wasn't too safe to stand near them, human or horse. Yeah, it was not so easy. At the end, um, I didn't catch the, the horse, but um, yeah, it was interesting to do. The show was uh, really good. It's incredible how these guys do this. And it's awesome that we have the opportunity to come here to watch them and for sure to represent Mexico. And for me, it's very nice to have these kind of events here. They do something similar in Brazil, but I never really tried and thought more driving race cars and lace the girls. Back inside, they got to try their hands at some typical Mexican games. But drivers enjoy a faster pace, so some of the braver boys got on the bucking Bronco. Some stayed on longer than others, but ultimately they all ended up in the same place. Horses, real or mechanical, and horsepower are very different things. Yeah, hey, it was a lot of fun uh, getting to get out there with the drivers and of course compete on a little bull riding competition, a mechanical bull, it was fun. It was really good fun, first time to try it. It was really hard to, to keep on it, but you know, I think I was good, better than other drivers. So you think in a race car the crotch belts are uncomfortable? That hurt. 550 horsepower, not a problem. Give me one horse, uh, not so much. Another victim there, James Hinchcliffe from the uh, the rodeo riding, but another fun event. Yeah, and I have to say, James Hinchcliffe's ride here this weekend in Team Canada's car has probably been as rough as it was on that uh, mechanical bull, and he did fall off a few times on the racetrack as well over the last two days. Now, there's a new driver we uh, haven't seen before. He's backed by Red Bull, as you can see. He's the new French driver for this weekend, and uh, Jean-Carl Vernet, who is going to be racing for Team France this weekend in replacement of Loic Duval. Duval has other commitments. We've got a few drivers like that coming in this weekend who have got their opportunities, perhaps because the regular incumbent is busy elsewhere. Now, this young man's been doing a pretty good job so far. Of course, uh, it's difficult to step into Loic Duval's shoes because he's much less experienced. He's been racing in Formula Renault in France up to now. Yeah, it's a big, big step up from Formula Renault into an A1 GP car. Maybe slightly offset by the fact that because we are at altitude, he's not getting the full 520 horsepower in the race, the 550 with push to pass. So uh, it, it's interesting to see how France will get on. Again, going into qualifying those four segments, you've got to get on it straight away, particularly coming out of that final turn, 14. Clean exit onto the pit straight because you're going to carry your speed all the way for a kilometre and a half before you get off the throttle pedal. Narain Kartikeyan back 14, India. He seemed to be struggling somewhat this morning. Then they bolted some new tyres on and he popped up to third fastest. But uh, there's still a look of concern rather than confidence on his face, I would say. And they do seem to have been scratching their heads a little bit to make the car work around here. I would have thought this place would have suited him absolutely down to the ground. So somewhere they're not quite getting the car set up right. Well, you always suspect that Narain is a, what you call a reaction driver. He's always able to react. He's got cat-like reactions. And that's what you need, particularly around the S's part of the racetrack where you're making this switch build until that later stages of the final practice session this morning. That was Nur Ali driving for Pakistan once again. Scored point last time out in Durban, so he's hopeful, of course, of doing likewise again here. But this is a tough track. There's our new German driver for the race weekend. It's Christian Vittoris. It's not Nico Hülkenberg, the man who has won every single race in the second half of the season. So this young man has a lot to live up to but he's been doing pretty well so far. We'll see how he gets on. The first qualifying segment of the day here at Mexico City is about to get underway. Drivers preparing in pit lane. We've got wonderful weather conditions. We're all set for the first of the four segments, and it's going to be Team Pakistan to take to the track first. No, Ali 
scoring that point in Durban last time out and uh, determined to, to be out there early. Let me just quickly run you through the list of drivers here today. Team Australia have a new driver in Ian Dyke. He's been their rookie driver a little bit. Brazil has Bruno Junqueira, the only man who's ever raced here on this track of our current crop of drivers. Canada has James Hinchcliffe, China, Hoping Tom. Then Team Czech Republic has Yanis Jalic. Team France has Jean-Carl Vernet. Germany has Christian Vitoris. Great Britain going for Oliver Jarvis this weekend. Uh, India, Narain Kartikeyan. Indonesia, Nanda Mikula. For Ireland, it's Richard Lyons. For Italy, Enrico Tocicello. For Lebanon, Alan Kudair makes his return. Alex Jung drives for Malaysia. Salvador Duran is the host nation driver. Jeroen Blikamolen and Renga van der Zender are both driving for Team Netherlands, but it's van der Zender who will qualify today. Johnny Reid from New Zealand. No Ali here for Pakistan. Alvaro Parent for Portugal. And and then Adrian Zaug for South Africa. Finally, we've got Marcel Fassler for Switzerland and Jonathan Summerton for the United States. Just looking into Team Australia, Ian Dyke on his helmet. He's got the Silverstone Rubber Company. Well, that's a new one on me. <laughs> well, he's uh, he's been rubbing that, running that rubber right out to the edge of the track just about everywhere, hasn't he, John? He certainly has. I've been coming off turn 14, the Peretelta. He's been running it, in fact, either very early in the exit or even very late in the exit. Somehow or other, he's managed to kick up dust more than any other driver, and he seems to be unaware of it. So, Oli Jarvis with his first uh, opportunity to qualify for Team Great Britain. He's been fastest this weekend so far. Can he get pole position? Let's first of all focus on Team Pakistan, though. Let's see how Nur Ali has adapted to this track over the two days of practice that we've had so far. I think he's done a very good job. He's got within 2.8 seconds of the fastest time this morning, and that's clearly a step forward in performance for the Pakistani driver. He's into turn one. You can see the bumps just at the end. You can carry a lot of speed into turn one. It's one of those corners that invites you to run into it. Runs a little bit wide going through two, then exits out through three, kicks up the dust, a little bit careless on the exit, just let the car run unnecessarily too far over the curbs, but he gathers it all back and charges into four. So let's watch him now into the quick left, followed by a tight right. You've got to keep it neat and tidy through here. The car, as you can see, bouncing, but watch out for the bumps even further around the circuit. They, they have more effect, really, in the faster corners. Yeah, so into this double part six corner, then you pick up speed through turn seven, then back again for eight. Again, look at the amount of hand movement on the steering wheel from Nur Ali. That's not simply because of him using the steering wheel excessively. It's because of the bumps, the kickback, the feedback that you get through the steering when you're going around. Again, the bumping, the ratcheting from the rear of the Pakistan car. I mean, they've got a car set up, which whether it's good, bad or indifferent, that's what Nur Ali is going to have to drive here this afternoon. So now he's on the back straight, which leads down to Peraltada, that dauntingly fast, used to be banked, but now it's a flat corner. Nigel Mansell pulled off a huge manoeuvre around Gerhard Berger here many years ago. Now it's a little flatter than it was then, but it's still a great corner. It's blind, as you mentioned earlier, John, and he's come through there safely. Yes, he has, and he's going to do a 130 point something, 30.185. So, in fact, that is the quickest lap of the weekend for Nur Ali, so he'll be happy with that. He's continued the progress that he's made, and, uh, well, whether he's going to end up any further up the grid than he's done traditionally. But let's look again as he goes through. This is coming to turn eight, and the amount of movement on the steering wheel, a lot of it, as I mentioned, is the kickback. Well, that's how I beg it, coming out of turn three, where he ran wide. It was a little bit careless and letting the car run as well. Coming out of turn three, you put your foot down, expect to get a big drive out of the corner and that's not happening there that's one of the corners i particularly noticed i didn't get the drive off the corner due again to the altitude now malaysia started the weekend extremely well they didn't do the uh, uh, alex young was out in the second session yesterday of course didn't do the rookie session himself although they did have a rookie here for uh, the first time and uh, he set a time that was fourth quickest on friday afternoon but this morning he was struggling somewhat and then the car stopped on him they had an electrical problem so he only ended up 13th Scratching their heads a little bit. I should think they're probably going to go back to the setup they enjoyed on Friday. Yes, they've been playing around with setups, and Alex Jung with the Team Malaysia entry, they also tried to take wing off the car because come Sunday's race, the sprint race, and the feature race, you're going to have to carry a lot more speed on the straight than you would probably do for qualifying, simply because all the overtaking will take place pretty much into turn one. And uh, if you can maintain a good speed through, a balance through the S's, then you can keep your position and uh, not really be challenged too strongly. Let's just remind you, of course, Germany currently lead the points by a big margin, some 30 points in the A1GP World Cup of Motorsport. But uh, with Nico Hülkenberg not here this weekend, there is an opportunity for the other nations to try and catch up. In terms of qualifying, Germany has dominated the recent events. They took pole in New Zealand, pole in Australia, and pole last time out in Durban. So. 
today there's going to be an opportunity i would think for somebody else we don't expect christian vittoris the german driver this weekend he is fast but we don't really expect him to be challenging for pole position just yet well just under 10 minutes now remaining we've still only seen one qualifying lap established that's pakistan we've got cars now out on circuit we've seen the czech republic go out indonesia is going out malaysia going down the pit lane so with just was it nine minutes or so of the session remaining it's going to start getting rather busy Looks like a pretty fresh set of tyres on the uh, Malaysian car there as Alex Young heads out. Team Ireland have been suffering problems, not really on the pace, and then they had a gearbox problem this morning. Yes, they, uh, they had to rebuild the gearbox since uh, Durban. They didn't have all the required parts that they needed, and they then got them, and uh, so it was a little bit of catch-up for Team Ireland, so everything is back to square one, and uh, looking for a significant improvement in performance. Interestingly, that the Netherlands and Ireland are partners, if you like, in, in sharing technology information as set up, and the setup of the two cars is not very far apart. The Netherlands were second quickest this morning, Ireland, in spite of that problem they had, down in 20th place, and there's a lot of head scratching going on on the Ireland technical side. Just remember, they do one flying lap in each of these four segments of qualifying. Each segment is 15 minutes long, and there are eight minutes and a half remaining in this session, as you can see from the clock in the top left-hand corner of screen, ticking away. We're now on the flying lap of Jarek Yanis for the Team Czech Republic. So there you see the flow of turns one, two, and three, and uh, they're all pretty nice corners, but you've got to stay away from the banking. They are very steep banks or curbing, and uh, any attempt to ride it with the low slung front wing on the A1 GP car will immediately put the wing into contact with the curb before the wheel gets there. Yes, thankfully we haven't seen anybody do that yet, whack the front wing off on one of these curves, but surely somebody's going to do it at some point. Yarek Yanis drove the car here for the Czech Republic in Indonesia earlier on this season. Had a, a pretty strong result, particularly in the feature, finished in seventh. Yeah, he got a big slide going into turn eight and the back end of the car stepped out. So the car, you can see, riding over the bumps, the suspension, it's a choppy, ratchety kind of ride. Not the easiest ride, particularly going through these S's. That's right, now there we are, there's the Czech Republic car, still on the flying lap. Some of these other cars are currently themselves on laps where they're just out of the pits, so just getting up to speed. But Malaysia also on a flying lap at the moment. Team Australia, you just looked at there, they're just on an out lap. So here we go, Yarek Yanis about to finish off his flying lap. And let's see where this puts him. Should be first, because only Pakistan has set a pace so far. This is going to give us a bit more idea. Across the line he goes, and uh, he does go quickest. Can confirm, the clock's still ticking there, but he's done a 129.188. So there we have a look at the Czech Republic as it comes out. This is going to go into turn eight when you see the back of the car steps away. This is the left hand, turn seven. This Then he changes direction. There she goes. And you'd always imagine that he hadn't gotten the tyres up to full operation temperature, but I think those tyres were plenty warm enough. So again, an indication as to where the car is. Indonesia now quickest on a 127.659, and that is fractionally slower than the quickest lap we saw this morning from Team GBR. So a big leap forward for Indonesia. They were down in 19th to 29.1 this morning, and they've picked up best part of a second and a half. That's a great lap. There is a bit more cloud cover than we saw this morning, so that might be helping the times. So there's Malaysia on a quick lap. Now, Alex Young was so fast on Friday. Have they got the car back to where they want it to be? Is he going to challenge Indonesia? It's going to be quick in the 26s. First time we've seen a car this weekend that fast, and it's Alex Young who sets the initial pace. Well, low fuel, fresh tyres, and a very strong lap. Indeed, all the experience and expertise of Alex Young gives him a 0.854 second advantage. Portugal have just leapt up into second place, disposing Indonesia down to third. Now then, Germany, with the new driver, Christian Vittoris, how's he going to do? He goes second, what a great first effort. I know not so many cars have set a time yet, but he's ahead of Portugal, he's ahead of USA, who's just popped up into fourth, and that's a good first effort by Christian Vittoris for Team Germany. But Malaysia is still 0.731 of a second advantage. That was a stunning lap from Alex Jung. We've not seen anything approaching that level of performance over the weekend to date from Alex Jung. And when it counts, he delivers. James Hinchcliffe for Canada coming up out of turns 13 into 14. Watch Hinchcliffe. This car has been very unstable at the rear of the car, bouncing around, giving him a hard time. This is the only race in the Americas in this second season of A1GP, so it's as close to a home race as James Hinchcliffe is going to get. What can Canada do on their first run? It's not going to be that quick. Cross the line, let's see, it's uh, seventh. seventh. Seventh quickest for Team Canada. The clock not stopping quite where it should do, but I can confirm he's gone seventh. India's gone eighth. Czech Republic now ninth and Pakistan tenth, but it's still Malaysia on top. Australia have just gone fourth, by the way, ahead of the United States. So let's look at China. 
And what Triple Pong Tung is going to do, so trying to on a flying lap. In through this sequence of three corners, one, two, and three. And the exit of the corner, you can run the curb, but you don't want to go any more than that. There's a drop off on the outside of the curb, then you hit the grass. Uh, but a good exit for Team China. Yeah, hoping Tung has been pretty much on the pace so far this weekend. Let's see if he can get it together. There's a car ahead, but hopefully that yeah, gets well out of the way. And he's on a clear lap still, so that wasn't a problem for Hoping Tung. Best that he's qualified is sixth, but the China's best performance of the year, fourth place. And that was uh, in the Czech Republic, it's Bruno. So, China continuing on their way. Let's see whether he can manage to go into that top group. Malaysia currently fastest from Germany and Portugal. And Malaysia's opening salvo there, very impressive. We do I mean, know they were on new tyres. I suppose it may be possible that the others, not they, all of they them may, are. They may well have used a very fresh set of used tyres rather than a, a set that they were in, because most people this morning did not run new tyres. But well, that's what's trying to come around again. You've got this baseball stadium, so you cannot see the exit of the corner until you get to here. And of course, by that stage, it's, if anything ever has to be a, an adjustment, it's a very late adjustment. China goes seventh, one minute 27.747. So a reasonable first run, but it doesn't challenge neither Malaysia nor Germany. Here's now New Zealand, Black Beauty on track. Always watch this car when you get into qualifying. Uh, they've had a fantastic sequence. Seventh, oh. 127.7. Now that clearly was not a new tyre run. So they may well have decided to hold back, wait to see how the circuit has changed since we stopped after the third official practice session this morning. And uh, there's the answer, New Zealand down in seventh. And that's a 1.225 second disadvantage. So really, New Zealand will look to ditch this time and focus on the second, third and fourth qualifying segments. Interesting strategies then. Some people going for new tyres, most particularly Malaysia, but many of the other teams deciding to use the, a used set of tyres on this first run and then save their new tyres for later. That was the Netherlands. This is Renke van der Zander, the first time that we've seen him in the car in qualifying. He's been impressive in the rookie sessions, but here's his big opportunity. Big commitment going into turn 14. He came in very low, used part of the pit lane entry to get down low, ran it wide, comes across start finish line. Sixth, 127.65, 6.45. So, again, that looks like it may have been used tyres because he was very rapid this morning, ended up with the second fastest time. Team Mexico just uh, cruising round at the moment. Is he on an out lap? Or, yeah, he's on... No, he's on his hot lap. Is Salvador Durant. He's on his fast lap here. So, down into turn four. One of those corners you want to... Oh, there's the shot. There's the shot of the weekend. Those are the feet of Salvador Duran. Left foot breaker, as you note. Left foot on the brake, playing... A bit like playing a piano, a pedals on the piano. It's great to see, and he's now coming into the long series of S-Bend corners where a little bit of left foot braking there, and then back on the power smoothly. Fun to watch. See how quickly he gets back on the throttle, how much brake he's applying. Yeah, the car does not look stable. He had a slide coming through there again. Oversteer coming through turns 11 into turn 12. Watch the left foot. He's using it occasionally in those higher speed, the quicker over the corners just to get some stability. Now the foot's back off until he comes up to the Peretalda as he goes into that hard on the brakes. Here he comes, up into the corner now. So he'll be breaking a little bit into here, then he feathering the throttle. This is like a, a corner on an oval circuit, according to Alex Young. But this isn't, I don't think, going to be a particularly rapid lap. Let's just see where it puts him on his first run. Across the line, he's 13th. 13th fastest for Team Mexico. The car did not look stable to me through the sequence of corners we call the S's. He had to do in a couple of them at least that we saw make corrections and therefore he was having to get out of the throttle to stabilize the car. You saw those onboard shots of how his feet were dancing around the pedal box, left foot breaker clearly. And what you can do with left foot braking is you can play the two pedals at the same time rather than having to lift your foot off the throttle to go onto the brake. There's an advantage with left foot braking, but you have to be able to be naturally good at it. Two cars to set their times, and they're both potential pole winners. They are Brazil here on a fast lap, and Great Britain. Great Britain leaving it to the very last gasp here to go out and do their lap. But Bruno Junqueira, the man who's raced here in champ cars in the past, I mean, good old look in his mirrors, has he backed off? He's backed off. And, uh, whether he's, whether that's a problem for Brazil in this run, or he's, he's called that run off, I don't know. Another car followed him in, so we're waiting to see where Team GBR are on this lap. Yeah, that's an interesting... Well, there, one. that's why he went off track. He went off track coming out of turn three. And therefore, I think the team have decided just to forget it. No point in continuing. We've got three more bites in the cherry, so let's stop, regroup and go again. So, Great Britain have left it to the very last moment of qualifying. Checker flag will come out at the end of this lap for Oliver Jarvis, but he's now on a mission, and let's see how fast he can be. Just under a quarter of a second over the, the time of 
Malaysia, there's the chequered flag, and Oliver Jarvis into turn six. So he's been so neat and tidy this weekend so far. The temptation with this qualifying format is to overdrive the car. You only get one flying lap in each segment. Very easy to overdrive it rather than look for that flow and rhythm. But that's looking pretty neat and tidy there, I have to say. Yes, it's coming through turns 9, 10, into 11. And oh, 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 oh again, oversteer for Team GBR. Big commitment going through turns 10 and 11. Oh, then, slide there too, And then final turn 13. But the thing is, he's got now so much confidence in the car. He's prepared and happy to let the back of the car move around. He's not phased by it. Other drivers would be straight under the throttle and complaining about the ill-handling car. I would guess this is a run on old tyres because his pace this morning would suggest he would certainly threaten for the fastest time on new tyres. Let's see what it is, though. He's across the line and he second. goes second. Second fastest to Malaysia. Great first effort by Oli Jarvis for Team Great Britain. Yes, that was a very good run. We believe that was on used tyres. You can see again the way the back of the car just started to slide, the slide around. But Jarvis is comfortable with that. Something that on a track like this, if you haven't got a comfort zone, you'll never ever manage to get the throttle open and keep it. So, were they on new tyres or used tyres, whatever, they've gone second quickest, which is a good effort. Germany third, Portugal fourth, France fifth, and then Australia, Italy, United States and Netherlands. Indonesia in 10th, New Zealand down in 11th, ahead of South Africa, China, Mexico, and then uh, Switzerland with Canada well down, India and Ireland also well down, ahead of the Czech Republic, Lebanon and Pakistan. So that's how the 21 cars, with Brazil not having set a time, uh, potentially at the moment, still three segments of qualifying to go, anything can happen. Yeah, interesting, Brazil flagged that run off because of the error with Bruno Junquera coming out of turn three, he ran the car wide, so they thought, let's come in, we'll keep that set of tyres, they'll be fresh, so even keeping maybe an extra couple of laps off the tyres, teams are prepared to do that. Well, it's certainly an impressive first run for Team Malaysia and Alex Young, who struggled this morning, and then they had that car problem which saw him stranded on circuit. They've certainly put that behind them, and he's back onto the sort of form we saw yesterday afternoon. And uh, certainly Team GBR seemed to hit the track running on Friday. They haven't made that many changes, and they're fast as well. Let's see how they line up initially after just one segment of qualifying. It's Malaysia fastest, Great Britain second, Germany with their new driver, a fantastic third. Portugal fourth, France with another youngster. Look at that, fifth. Excellent effort. Australia in a good sixth ahead of Italy, United States, the Netherlands, and Indonesia. Nando Mikula certainly picking up time in this session. New Zealand, though, lower than expected in 11th ahead of South Africa and China. Host nation Mexico only 14th ahead of Switzerland, Canada. And then India and Ireland both struggling as they have been all weekend ahead of the Czech Republic. Then Lebanon, Pakistan, and Brazil failing to set a time. So an exciting first session. Uh, certainly Alex Young for Team Malaysia fast in that first session. We can have a word with him. He's with Simon Hill in the pit lane. Alex, you've absolutely stunned the pit lane with that time. Yeah, no, I'm very happy with it. You know, I had a nice clean lap. Uh, the car's a lot better than we had it in the session earlier. We only just made it out in time because we had problems replacing the master switch. But yeah, well, hopefully we can repeat it one more time. And each time you go out, you seem to find some little different trick. Have you got anything else you're going to change after the, that run? Yeah, the balance still ain't quite perfect, so we can we can definitely work a bit a bit more on that. Now, I asked you earlier if you felt the track had come in, and you had a long think about it. Now, obviously, from what we've just seen, it looks like it certainly looks a bit better. Yeah, definitely, the track the track has picked up grip. Um, not as much as I would have expected, because you know this, this this place is used as a park most of the time, but it has picked up grip. Thanks, Alex. Thanks. So, great first effort for Team Malaysia. Can they? maintain that sort of performance there are still three segments of qualifying to go well if he can repeat the time that he just established in that first qualifying segment he's going to be looking very comfortable indeed and really put the challenge down to the rest of the field and Alex Young he's one of those race drivers he's a smart smart race driver and I throwing a time 1 minute 26.490 in that first session catching everybody wrong footing the entire paddock well he's done the time others have now got to achieve that time that's right so the uh, He's certainly set the challenge, hasn't he, for the rest of them. But the other European nations tucked in behind him, Great Britain, Germany, Portugal and France, are all very much fighting with each other currently. And when they put some new tyres on, perhaps they're going to be able to feature more strongly. Definitely good effort from Australia, Ian Dyke, with that sixth fastest time.
We're preparing for the second segment of qualifying to get underway here at the Autodromo Hermanos Rodriguez in Mexico City. This huge conurbation of some 20 million people. We've got some fans here, racing fans here, and there is a lot of support for motorsport in this country. The Champ Cars have raced here. A NASCAR Bush Series raced here just a few weeks ago, and now it's the turn of A1GP. It's the second time A1GP has been in Mexico, but uh, 12 months ago it was at a different circuit. It was in Monterrey. This time we've come to the former Grand Prix venue here in Mexico City. And there is the only driver of the field who's raced here, and that is Bruno Junquera. Yes, and uh, with all that experience, all the knowledge of the racetrack, he still was the one driver that made an error, that caught him out, that was sufficient for the team to say, right, Bruno, forget about it, come back into the pits, we've got three more opportunities. Well, I mean, you've got a lot of young drivers here who've got very little experience at all, let alone of driving an A1 GP car, and they're not making mistakes. Bruno, what do you want to say about that? Yeah, well, he's certainly capable of getting it all together, so we'll have to wait and see whether he does manage to do that. So we've got uh, Pakistan out on circuit, and Australia also, interestingly, deciding to go out very early on in this session. Others are just waiting, biding their time, waiting for the opportunity to come out and do their one flying lap. Salvador Duran for Team Mexico is one of those. Look at that car. <laughs> so many names uh, on it this weekend. Festooned in, uh, in advertising, and, uh, well, good on... Salvador Duran and uh, the Mexican support that he's getting because that's what we want to see in A1GP as we talk look at Johnny Reed and David Sears now they clearly ran on a new set of tires and you would expect Johnny Reed to be right up there nudging the times of Malaysia but of course having Malaysia established a time they're in a slightly more comfortable position than everybody else yeah they're all chasing now aren't they Pakistan about to come round and start their flying lap Richard Lyons looking focused in the Tame Ireland car He's got to find a big, big chunk of time because Ireland languishing down in 18th position. Last time out in Durban, they had their best qualifying performance of the year so far, and suddenly now it doesn't seem to be coming together for them. Well, it's very strange. It's hard to understand because I mentioned earlier that there's a bit of uh, synergy between the Netherlands and Team Ireland, and uh, for some reason the Netherlands have got the performance Ireland hasn't, and uh, inevitably the focus will, at some point or other, end up on the driver. And uh, I don't know whether Ireland are going down that route or not, but... There's certainly some questions that have got to be answered, and that's got to be one of them. Now, watch this car, because Ian Dyke driving for Australia, the first time he's raced for them and qualified for them. He certainly attacks this track. He's fun to watch. He, he's not afraid of the car. He's not afraid of the track. And we've been enjoying him uh, putting the wheel over the edge in a few places so far this weekend. That was a bit more neat and tidy. Yes, and he, he again looks as if he's able to place the car in the corner precisely where he wants it to be. He is driving sometimes right on the edge, sometimes he's actually over the edge, but he's still got natural speed, and if you haven't got natural speed, it's hard to, to breed it into a driver. You can always sort of smooth off the rough edges. Ain Dyke is giving it the full bananas here this weekend, and uh, I'm sure he's going to be entertaining as he comes through the S's. Team Australia's car, I have to say, as we're watching it right now, is looking a lot better than we've seen it over previous events, not just here in Mexico. That's right, it looks as though they've made a lot of progress with the car, and Ian, the 21-year-old former motocross rider, you know, uh, some people suggest that uh, this track suits guys who are used to two wheels because of that rhythm and flow you need through that section. And also, if you're a motocross motorcycle rider, those things are all over the place, I mean, they're never pointing in a straight line, they're usually up in the air anyway. Ian Dyke did get caught out a little bit coming through 13, he got caught out through 12. There he kicks the dust again in the exit of 14. Yeah, he's used to doing that. Let's see, he goes fastest for now because, of course, remember, your two fastest times added together give you your aggregate time, and at the moment, they're all just adding in a second time. How quick was he? He was a tenth of a second slower than his original run, so he did a 27.599 against a 27.449. So, that, oh! that was the beginning of his hot lap. Dear me. I mean, <laughs> does he flirt with it? He does that every yeah, time. So you, would, you wouldn't want to be his girlfriend, would you? <laughs> he does go for it, but I think there are times when he could perhaps just calm it down a little bit, and that surely must have cost him uh, certainly hundreds of a second, if not a, a tenth or two. It, it would have taken certainly a good tenth and a half, two tenths. Here we look at South Africa, Adrian Zag again, the back end of the car, just in the exit of the corner. It kicks out back to Nur Ali for Pakistan. Team Pakistan uh, has done its second lap now, so... No, Ali will be slowing down. Meanwhile, Adrian Zal on this fast lap. Let's see if he can move up. Adrian Zal again 
out of 13, lets the car run right out, he feeds the car up, he wants to maximise the exit speed and with a restriction on horsepower due to altitude, you've got to free the car up at every opportunity to get the maximum speed off a corner. Sal does flirt with the edge a little bit, but it's at the end of his lap, so you understand that somewhat, he goes second for now behind Australia. And that time was again just about a tenth of a second down on his first run, 27.7 contrasting to a 27.8. Watch the back of Saug's car. Oh, he picked up a bit of... Oh, it's just well, a, that's a tear-off from another driver's yeah. visor, and all these little clear strips. So coming up was through turn eight into turn nine. And Adrian Zog fully committed back up to the speed that we watched and were so impressed by when he did his debut race for South Africa back in the Netherlands at the end of September, beginning of October. That's right. Well, they were 12th after the first session. They now pop up to second, but remember, most people haven't completed their second lap yet, and you've got to add the two lap times together. Now, coming out towards us, Team USA there. This is the youngster, Jonathan Summerton, who suffered a big accident in Durban last time out. But thankfully, after initial concerns that he'd broken his wrist, they were proven unfounded, and actually he's fit and well and ready to do battle here this weekend. Yes, and again, it's been very impressive. I think... I think the essence of what we've seen here in Mexico it is the younger drivers, it is almost the rookie drivers that are being the dominant drivers because they're essentially getting out there and driving, they're not being too affected by the fact that there are compromises to be made. Alex Jung, of course, is, is the exception to the rule. He's a much more experienced driver and he used that to full effect, but it's the youngsters that are really snapping at his heels. Yes, Jonathan Summerton here has... Uh, they had an engine change overnight. I know they're a lot uh, happier this morning. They had better straight line speed, but he seemed to be struggling to get the balance of the car and felt a little bit of inconsistency he felt and just couldn't get quite happy with it this morning seven tenths down on the fastest uh, aggregate time so far and just look at them under head shake and steering wheel shake he runs right right out clips the verge on the outside of the corner this little throttle went into the brake into Peraltada very late on the brakes down a gear drives the car into the pit lane entrance then runs back up and then Runs out to the exit of the corner, good exit speed for USA. Yeah, looks like a pretty good exit. Let's see where this puts them. It puts them third for now behind Australia and South Africa. Yeah, slightly slower than the others. We've seen other drivers do the second segment and be within a tenth of a second. For the USA, they lost probably the best part of 0.6 of a second on that second run. Rick Feininger on the right-hand side, team seat holder there for Team USA. Got a new sponsor on the car in Burger King. So they'll be hoping for a, a good result here. Well, look at this, Salvador Duran from Mexico. He is wringing the neck of that car. He is a strong driver, runs right, and again on the exit of 13. And listen to here, he goes up into the final corner. Let's see how this one goes then. Oh, it's a slight problem there on the uh, picking the picture up. He's picking back up again through Peraltada. Is this going to bring Mexico back up the order? This is what the fans are hoping for, cheering him round the track. Where does it put him? It puts him second to Australia. And that was a better lap than his first runner, 27-7, the first one, 27-6. So one of the only two drivers out of the top six have actually gone quicker on their second runs than they did on their first. Still waiting for the front runners from the first session to come back out, though. Those are Malaysia, Great Britain, Germany, Portugal, France. We're all waiting for those so far. Australia, the top of the top six to have uh, set a second time. So now Australia will sit and wait for them to come out and see how they reply. And Ander Mikula, he goes fourth for Indonesia, that's a good effort. Yes, also he, he exited the corner much later than others we've been seeing. So different car set up for Indonesia and benefiting from them. And uh, up to fourth place again, just about a tenth and a bit second slower than his first run. Yeah, so he was tenth after the first segment of qualifying. He could hold that sort of position, I think, again, once all the times are in. Back onto the straight, Germany's out there, but it's the Czech Republic on a hot lap at the moment. Yannick Yanis, let's see whether he's dragged a little bit more speed out of this car. But Germany, no, was on a hot lap, has gone fastest. Germany's just gone quickest, and the Czech Republic goes eighth. So that lap for Germany, again, a tenth of a second down, but consistency from Germany puts them quickest of all. We still wait to see what's going to happen when Alex Jung from Malaysia goes out, but a young German driver replacing another young German driver. This is Christian Vitoros, it's not Nico Hulkenberg, familiar car, unfamiliar driver, but outcome, no different. Yeah, pretty similar as at the moment, it is, he's fastest. India, here's Narain Kartike, and can they find a little bit of pace here? Desperate to move up the order, they go ninth for the moment. And he also improves significantly, he improves by 0.9 of a second over his front, first runs. So 
Arthur Kayan, he might dismiss that first run and uh, build on it in the third segment and try and consolidate on that middle 127 second time. So it's Germany, Australia, Portugal, Mexico, Indonesia. That's the top five, but keep an eye on Renga van der Zander here for Team Netherlands. Could expect them to perhaps pop into the top seven or eight. He was ninth after the first segment of qualifying. Yeah, one minute 27.6 was his lap, so uh, let's see whether he improves on it or he consolidates. He certainly needs something in that zone to bring him up to the sort of level that would put him into the top four or five. Out of peril time, a fast corner, no chicane to deal with on the way in, which is sometimes used. And across the line he goes, Netherlands eighth fastest with that. Well, that was disappointing, one minute 28.1 against a 27.6. So Renger van der Zender will think about it and say, well, qualifying two, that was no use to me. Now here's our new Frenchman, Jean-Carl Vernet, who put in a respectable effort, actually. He was fifth quickest in that first segment of qualifying. And the uh, blue, white and red colours of Team France, which we've seen so successful in A1GP, and yet, and yet, they haven't won a race in this second season so far. It's a tall order to ask a young man who's not even done a season of Formula 3 yet, but uh, he's doing well so far. Well, a 1 minute 27.4 was his lap. If he's on that same set of tyres, I suspect that France are running him for this second qualifying segment on that set of tyres you ran the first one on, so expected to be marginally slower. But you know, for a young driver, very little experience in cars of this performance. He's done a very powerful job for France. Yeah, he looks composed and confident, speaks a reasonable amount of English. He's not completely fluent yet, but uh, the 20-year-old certainly impressing people with his smoothness and consistency this weekend so far. Let's see if he can keep it up. Good, neat line out of uh, Peril Tada. Doesn't run wide. Let's see if this pops him yep, up into fourth place. So it is another good effort. Yeah, half a second down, but that's the difference between the tyre having run in the first qualifying segment and then being used and asked to perform for a second time. So good consistency from France to be fourth quickest. There's the car of uh, New Zealand really moving around. Look how wide there Johnny Reed goes on the exit of turn 13. He's hard on it. And he's so confident in this car. He's been running already. That was a little bit of a check going into turn 14. He had to get out of the throttle of the car. Just stepped sideways back on it again. That will have shaved a couple of tenths off his lap. Let's see where it puts it, New Zealand. Yeah, he's certainly trying hard, is it enough? No, he's seventh. It's only seventh fastest for New Zealand. Well, that is such a surprise. He almost matched his time. In fact, I think he probably would have matched it. His engineer, Chris Gordon, looks down. David Sears looks slightly concerned now. He maybe expected more from his driver than that. Germany, John, with their new driver, Christian Vittoris, is fastest. New Zealand, who, of course, share the engineering set up with Germany and have got fed up with Nico Hulkenberg beating them all the time. They're, they're six places well, behind. Well, that's why he lost it, because he almost lost the back of the car. And that's in the early segment of the S's behind the pits. So a big, big slide from the back of the car. And again, you could just watch the back of the car still looking like it wanted to move around more than I think Johnny Reed from New Zealand would have cared for. So, Ready for Malaysia and here at GBR. Yeah, late runs for Malaysia, Great Britain and Ireland. Ireland just heading out of the pit lane. Malaysia's just gone out. And Great Britain, as you can see, are now driving down pit lane. What a... I mean, now that we've got this second set of times in, it does highlight just how fast Alex Young was on that first segment of qualifying. It was a, a breathtaking time. Now, the thing is, can he repeat it? Well, if he's on the same set of tyres, no, he will not repeat it, but he's got such an advantage in hand. He was the only driver ever at any point to get into the moment of 26s on the circuit. He did a 26.490. If he can do anything in a high one minute 26s, he will be quids in. He will, but uh, Great Britain, of course, also in there with a hot chance. They were second to Malaysia after that first segment of qualifying. And currently it's Germany on top who had been third behind these two. So it does look as though those three nations at the moment are the ones to watch. Malaysia, Great Britain and Germany. Germany's set their second time. We're now waiting for the other two to do likewise. And Malaysia's on the hot lap. Yes, yeah, so good clean entry and exit out of those three corners. Then the short run down to turn four. You can break very, very late into this corner. It's a very gentle entry. It guides you into the corner, but then it nips there, and you've got to get the speed off. You've got to get down the gear, and it's flat out. The power, there's so little power at altitude, you can nail the throttle, and you've got nothing but traction. Now, the green showing that he's up on the aggregate time of Team Germany. There is the current fastest man. New face to A1GP, Christian Vittoris. He looks pretty composed, doesn't he? But he's also aware that his fastest time is under threat from the yellow and white colours of Team Malaysia. But don't forget, Great Britain are also on track. What you want to be able to listen to are the on-track microphones, the on-board microphone on the car, to hear how much throttle he's opening 
keeping open, and he's keeping it open quite a lot. This is still going to be a very quick lap. You know, he's on up for another fast, fast lap to further cement his advantage here. Malaysia through Peraltada, the car moving around at high speed, but he's got it beautifully under control out of the final corner. Surely Malaysia going fastest here, but by how much? Yes, he does. And it's another one minute, 26 well, second lap. I said if he can do a high 26 to go along with that minute, one minute, 26.4, he will be in a very strong position. And he can come in at the end of the second qualifying segment pretty happy. He's got 1.197 of a second advantage over Germany. Can Great Britain do something about that? It looks as though Oliver Jarvis might be the only one who's going to threaten Malaysia's advantage here. The checkered flag comes out, but Jarvis is on his hot lap. So is Team Ireland, by the way, just a little further up the road. So, Great Britain, the closest to challenging Malaysia again. Look at the car move around. Yeah, but it looks good. It looks positive. A little bit wide entering. Into that was turn 11 through turn 12. Now coming towards us, turn 13 leads onto the back straight. But Oliver Jarvis needs to get a low 1 minute 26 to put him right up and put pressure on Malaysia. Currently, Malaysia are so far ahead of everybody else after two segments that uh, really they don't have to do too much in segment three and four. So Jarvis through the final corner. Where's this going to put him? I think it will put him in the battle for second, but it's surely not enough to beat Malaysia. He goes third behind Germany. So that shows how quick Christian Vitoris is for Germany. Ireland crossed the line just then. They've gone 19th, but Great Britain down to third. They were second, and they've got a little bit of work to do here. But Malaysia's advantage, 1.1 seconds after two segments of qualifying. Smart old guy, isn't he? I mean, if you talk about old, he's barely 30 years of age. Alex Young comes into the pit. They've done something to this car that has really got it hooked up with the track here. Local time just coming up to 10 to 3 in the afternoon. Temperatures are high, track temperatures are high, but they've got their car working and they've got that 1.197 second advantage over Germany. Team GBR lost more in their second run than Germany did. That's why Germany has leapfrogged ahead of them. Let's get down to the pits with news from Simon and Lee. Simon. Yeah, Team Indonesia very pleased with how things have been going and Ander Mikola told me earlier he was 23 kilometres faster through Peratada than Alex Jung. Well, somewhere that those fortunes have been reversed looking at the drive that Alex Jung's put in so far. Just about all of the cars in the top end of the pit lane went out on old rubber on that session and uh, South Africa are probably the team in this half that are most disappointed. They had a new engine put in overnight and it's even slower than the one they had yesterday so they're pretty upset. Lee, what can you tell us from your side of the pit lane? Well, there's a few unhappy ships. Team New Zealand is definitely one of those. They went out on new tyres in session one, old tyres in session two. I spoke to Johnny Reid after session one. He is not happy at all. He wouldn't tell me what tyres he was on. I already knew, but he was trying to play coy. Ollie Jarvis, he wasn't too confident before the start of qualifying. He's never done a qualifying session before. Doesn't look as if he's got too much to worry about. Germany have gone out on new tyres in both of those sessions. But what a reception Salvador Duran and Team Mexico are getting from the crowd. He is a local hero around these parts. Thanks very much, Lee. Yes, fascinating uh, to hear. And new tyres on the German car, both those sessions. So they're in a strong second place, but that might come under threat uh, in the remaining two segments of qualifying. But uh, once again, Germany seems to be producing these youngsters, don't they? Yes, they do. I mean, the, the key to the qualifying is consistency, and that's what Germany provided. They were a tenth of a second down on their first run. Nevertheless, they were good enough to put themselves from second up, from third up to second place. And uh, Team GBR, of course, they'll have new tyres remaining. But it's Alex Young who really set everybody right on their heels in that first qualifying segment and then repeated the, the, the medicine with a very, very strong second run. He's the only driver over the weekend to get into one minute 26 second laps. There are two more events remaining in A1 GP in this second season. And next time out, we'll be in China. Gentlemen, for the pride of your nation, start your engines. <laughs> So the next event on that wonderful facility in Shanghai. But let's uh, focus our attention once again on what's happening here. China themselves are currently 12th quickest in this session. 
I think they need to find a little bit to get back into the top 10, but they're certainly capable of doing that, looking at the performances of the weekend so far. Hoping Tung just keeping nice and relaxed in there. Yes, I mean, he can get himself maybe up to somewhere like eighth on the grid, and then you can drive a race of consolidation because ultimately everybody is looking at where they finish in the sprint race because that determines your grid positions for the feature race and that's really where you, I would expect to see China and Hoping Tung do a bit more damage as they did in Australia. A third place would suit them fine. Ian Dyke's looking pretty happy too, isn't he, for Australia, currently fourth. Third segment of qualifying coming up soon. Ian Dyke for Australia in a superb fourth place so far. And that's certainly uh, better than Australia has seen for quite a while in A1GP. Alan Jones's decision perhaps to bring Ian Dyke in from being the rookie driver to the race driver for the weekend seems to be working. I mean, there's no question about it that uh, saw Carl Reisler in the car pretty much all the way through. And uh, never really other than that run in, in uh, Beijing where he got himself onto the podium. But that was more, I think, a matter of survival than it was out and out pace. But Ayn Dyke has got pace. He's also a big commitment race driver. Maybe that comes from his motocross background. He's not afraid to drive through a problem. And occasionally, when, the, when chips are down, it is really left to the driver to drag that performance out. And certainly, Ayn Dyke, whether the car's any better or any worse than when Carl Reinder had it, I don't know. But certainly, he's dragged performance out of it that Reinder did not. It's interesting when you look at the times. We've got uh, one to three rookies I think in the top six places on the grid because we've got Ian Dyke there in fourth we mentioned him but the German of course Christian Vittoris and the French uh, driver Jean-Carl Vernet and it, it surprises me because normally when you get new drivers into this qualifying system they they struggle with this particularly unique way of doing it well here's a question do you consider Oliver Jarvis or Team GBR a rookie well I was wondering I nearly added him to that list because he's never done a qualifying session no, he, he did the race in Beijing but of course qualifying for a variety of reasons was based on a practice run which was very truncated because of uh, situations beyond the control nevertheless I mean it's amazing Alex Young the oh and Nur Ali First yeah. driver in contact with the barrier. Outlap. That wasn't even his hot lap. He was just gone out of the pits. Well, that probably was his hot lap then. <laughs> I don't know what's happened there, but poor Noor Ali has come to a, a, a very short end to the uh, to that third red, segment. Red flag. I was going to say yeah. that probably will see a red flag. So will the clock stop? To everybody, the safety car and the medical car are being deployed, and uh, they will get to that car. And Noor Ali sits in it. Of course, he's just spun harmlessly and uh, didn't keep the engine running, but the need to get this car removed to safety let's watch and see what happens well i know it's going to happen it's going to be a bit of oversteer and there it is that's in the middle of the s is probably up around about turns nine and ten and uh, it just comes to a harmless stop against the side of the tower wall but that car will need to be removed to safety well he was just so far off the line he caught the gray dirty part of the racetrack and you're going to get a very distinct line developing over the weekend because the blacker the tarmac the more grip you're going to get the lighter in color the more gray it is stay away that is no man's land right there absolutely right and uh, that's unfortunate that was the out lap so he was trying to get some heat in the tires trying to sort of get back into the rhythm of it all might have been on a used set of tires i don't know but definitely as you say he was offline ran wide picked up the loose stuff and that sent him off now as you say the clock keeps ticking so it will make the track more busy once they all get out there it's going to be great can't wait hope they get that car removed with only about three minutes remaining then we're going to see the basically the 21 car field because only one car was out on track that was team pakistan so if you've got maybe let's say be generous give them all five minutes it's going to be absolute well great good, tv yeah good fun let's hope that uh, they don't get this over too quickly but obviously we want to see cars out there soon they should be able to restart him maybe give him a bit of a push get the car fired up once again and get him to head back into the pits another look at it once again yes you can see the dust there he caught that with the right rear wheel and uh, it just, I mean, it harmlessly stops against the tire barrier. There's been no damage to that car at all. But of course, the, the bottom of the car is caught. And there, you got what five or six fairly strong guys trying to push it, and uh, they finally managed to get the the underbody of the car, which was beaching it effectively. So now I've bump started. Nur Ali, get it into gear, son, and. Um, Let's get this shoe back on the road. Yeah, picked up a bit of grass. I think that's the closest we've seen anyone to actually hitting any of the barriers. He just sort of touched it. I don't know if, know if it made much contact, but nobody else has actually gone off that far yet. No, we have not really seen anybody uh, manage to do what Nur Ali has just done. There have been a few occasions when drivers round about turn four and five have made errors, but uh, fundamentally that's the first time we've seen somebody loop it and uh, get caught. And uh, just a very, very minor 
caress, I might say, of that tyre barrier. He's fine so he's got Yes, there we go. So Bump started and off he goes again. I would reckon in about one and a half to two minutes the track will be under green flag once again. So it won't cost the other teams too much time. It hasn't affected them inordinately. Just makes uh, their chance to get back out a little bit more compressed. Yeah, Norelli weaving the car around to try and get those tyres as clean as possible. Of course, he's got an opportunity to go out and do another run. No, he doesn't. No, he but didn't. if he didn't on his outlap, if he did it on his outlap, then he hasn't completed a lap. That's true, but I think I don't think he'll be allowed to have another run. I think that's but he's it. coming into the pits anyway, so uh, as you would have to under a red flag. And uh, it'd be an interesting little scenario to see whether his uh, error on his outlap actually precludes him from running in the third segment altogether. The uh, announcement's been made that there's a, it's going to be just under a minute now until the session restarts. So I think we'll see a few teams getting ready now to come out for their third run, the third of four runs. Remember, it's Malaysia fastest, Germany second, Great Britain third, Australia an excellent fourth, then Portugal fifth, France sixth, Mexico host nation seventh, Indonesia an excellent eighth, Fernando Mikula, but New Zealand surprisingly down in ninth place, South Africa in tenth, then it's the USA, China, Netherlands, Italy, India, Switzerland, Canada 17th, Czech Republic 18th, followed by Ireland, Lebanon, Pakistan and Brazil. Interestingly, Brazil has only done one lap uh, so far. They aborted their first run. Where would their lap put them roughly, John, if they put well, two together? I would say probably about 12th place because there's a lot of people have uh, recorded a lap in the moment at 27s and the lap for Brazil was 127.7. So it's not even in the low 27. So I think he would have been outside of the top 10. Well, we were expecting great things from Bruno Junqueira with his track knowledge, but uh, of course he's got less experience in an A1 car than most of the other guys out there. Not all, because we've got a few rookies doing well today, particularly Germany, Christian Vitoris. He's top rookie at the moment in second place, and Oli Job is going out much earlier this time. Yes, and uh, that's a, a questionable judgment because if you go out very early, by the time the bulk of the field decide to make it out, you may find yourself running into them as they are on their outlaps, and of course traffic in a qualifying lap is an absolute no-no. You want to have an entire clear lap, otherwise you can pretty much kiss away any opportunity of an improvement. As you say, he's never done one of these qualifying systems before, so it is fresh to him. He did say this morning a top three starting position would actually make him very happy. He knows that the way of qualifying here is particular in A1, and he felt that the car is quick enough in race conditions that if he starts somewhere in the top three, he's got a real chance of victory. Yes, he does, and I think he's also got his eyes set on actually competing in the final round of this second series of A1GP at Brands Hatch at the end of April, and uh, there's going to be a big battle going on on Team GBR as to whether that privilege should go to Robbie Kerr, who's been pretty much the incumbent all the way through the two seasons of A1GP, or whether Oliver Jarvis will swing the favour of, of the management and the team. Yeah, that's going to be an interesting decision to be made. They're both such uh, rapid drivers, both, of course, knowing Brands Hatch extremely well. Out onto track now, here comes China then. So we're seeing quite a few cars out. We've got India, Great Britain, Portugal, Czech Republic, Netherlands, Italy and Lebanon all out on circuit. Not New Zealand, though. Johnny Reid's going to leave it a little later. But what is going on there? Down in ninth place, I'm not sure he's ever qualified off the uh, first two rows this year, so things not quite working yet. Well, I think the problem for Johnny Reid and Team New Zealand is that they probably have a reasonably good car. Uh, they were fourth quickest this morning, they did a 28-0 this morning. Of course, that was not a new tyres. The transition to new tyres may well have altered the balance of the car, and all of a sudden they're having to go read back and look over information and, and go through something, and maybe into areas they haven't even explored so far this weekend. Great Britain on the hot lap then, so this is a, an early run from Team GBR. But this is what I was concerned about, two cars, both of them are on out laps, so for Oliver Jarvis, that's something he's going to have to contend with. He does not want to catch those two cars going through this next sequence of corners. He will lose the momentum. And uh, the second of those two cars, I think, might, or well, the first car he's going to meet might be South Africa. He's just set a very rapid first sector time, though. It's the fastest first sector time we've seen of anybody, and that includes Malaysia. So a very, very good start to the lap for Team Great Britain. I think, I think he's probably sufficiently far behind the South Africa car. There it goes, goes through picture that it should not come into play. Of course, South Africa will be wanting to get up to speed as well. So from this point onwards, as we come into the final corners and the S's, South Africa is now really out of the zone of having any interference with Team GBR. So a strong run 
31.5 was his best time in that second sector. So he didn't get that purple on the computer, but nonetheless, having it in the first sector will help his course. Really getting down tight to the wall there on the inside apex, wasn't he? Much tighter than before, and he's right out to the edge on the exit. Let's see where this uh, keeps it. Puts him second now. He's ahead of Germany on a 127.1 individual lap time. Yeah, not quite as quick as his best overall. That still lies in sector one when he did a 127.101. He then, in the third one, did a 127.170, fractions of seconds, but it all counts when you add up together the four qualifying segments, you take your best two, and that then is combined to give you your grid time. Portugal's gone up to fourth as a result of that last run there, so a, a fairly even uh, set of lap times from Alvaro Parent, of course, who only returned to the series last time out in Durban. Well, I kicked the dust up big time, coming out of turn 13, round the car, all four wheels in that access, part of the racetrack into the back of the paddock so Alvaro Parent very very committed we now, South Africa yeah how South Africa getting on here this is Adrian Zaub still recovering from that operation on his forearms his arms still not up to full strength as yet but uh, he's certainly pushing hard he's been doing a lot of testing recently and reckons that's the only way to get fully fit and uh, currently he's 11th quickest can they find a bit more time in this third segment of qualifying well, he does show a lot of commitment, Adrian Zag. Again, like many of the drivers, finding that running very wide in the exit of turn 13 allows them to pick up a few, and literally leave only be hundreds of RPM. But then you've got to get the car stable into turn 14 and then drive the car hard through the last sector of the corner. That's a fabulous corner to watch the car working so hard. Let's see. And he moves up to seventh. It's a good effort from Adrian Zag. Best lap of the three that he's so far put in. So. 27-7, 27-8, 27-5, so he can dump the middle one. He's got two times, that give him uh, his fourth row of the grid starting position, provisionally. Germany, now, oh, he's got big sideways there, and he was on a, such a good first sector time as well. I don't know how he got sideways there, because it's almost impossible coming out of turn five to get sideways, but young Christian Vitoros did do so, and that will have knocked a couple of three-tenths off that sector time for the German currently, with two times, which had him ahead of GBR, GBR, completing their third run we watched with Germany midway around the back of the circuit other traffic ahead of them hopefully that will not be a factor it's Johnny Reid for Team New Zealand these two cars Germany and New Zealand are sisters nations in terms of engineering yes that's right Indonesia by the way has just gone seventh quickest that's a good effort from Ananda Mikula uh, they qualified better last time in Durban suddenly Ananda Mikula is looking like he did when he was on form last year. Let's see if this keeps Germany puts them back into second maybe or will they stay in third place now Cross the line, yep, stays third, so Great Britain have definitely gained that place. Interesting, Germany had that quickest run in that third sector, but they didn't regain that second place. So 127, 156, and it was really the run, that's what you get this coming out of turn five. Just, I think it was just careless. He ran the car too wide, he was just not paying attention. Uh, so, I mean, that part of the circuit, it is the easiest part of the racetrack. Locks up the inside wheel, in spite of all that, he still records as fast as single overall lap, but Great Britain did it enough in their first sector to combine that with their third sector to get back ahead of Germany. So it's a battle for Germany for second and third on the grid. Now France has got some work to do because they've qualified well earlier on. Oh, he's driving it hard, but Italy's improved in the meantime. So now Italy's up to sixth, Indonesia seventh, South Africa's also improved. This has all pushed France down to ninth. They were sixth a little while ago. So here we are, Jean-Carl Vernet has plenty of work to do. Well, uh, Brazil, Junquera has, uh, Junquera has done a lap, he's got himself up into 13th place, which is about where I predicted if he had run the first sector, he would be roughly 12 for 13. Still on board, the French car, fifth gear, up to sixth briefly along here, and then watch as he comes into pedal tada, car coming in the pits. There, there's the throttle, and then full on and correcting the car, you've got to commit, commit, right out to the edge. Good driving style there, but will it move him back up? Yes, he's back up to fifth place. Great effort from Jean-Carl Vernet. Well, three young drivers out there, Germany, France, and of course Oliver Jarvis with Team GBR, all performing in the top six. Ayn Dijk down to sixth place. Again, a great run from Australia and Ayn Dijk, really. I think and there'll be a bit of a head scratching in the Australia camp saying, well, why did we not give this youngster a run much earlier? You know, not the end of the season yet, but they might have put him in a bit earlier and benefited from his pace. Now then, do you think Malaysia can go even faster than they have done already? He's uh, the only driver still in the 1 minute 26 is pretty much. I think what they might do is run used tyres just to see where they are. They've got a 9 tenths of a second, an 8 tenths of a second advantage. It's quickest in that first sector again of everybody. Maybe he's on new tyres. Maybe they want to get this job over and done with. 
they, if they do it sufficiently well, they may not even have to run in the fourth segment. That's right, they might save some tyres uh, and not do the fourth qualifying segment. Car looked very good going through turn six. He did what I did, I suggested you do, and there are track facts. You make turn six, which is two parts, into a single nice constant arc, and uh, he's looking strong. Alex Jung has not looked as strong as this since, I think, back in Bruno. Yeah, that's when he took a couple of victories, and look at it, it's a good lap coming up here. This will put him further ahead of anybody else. He's currently the leader by three quarters, just over eight-tenths of a second from uh, Great Britain and Germany, but this could just open up that gap a little more, keeps it quite high through that Peraltada corner, and let's see how fast he can be as he comes up across the line, so neat and tidy. He goes out to the edge, but he doesn't run onto the dirt, stays quickest. It's another one minute, 26 second lap. Well, I think he's got this all over, and uh, three laps in all in the one minute, 26 seconds, and uh, the gap is now 1.133 1 of a second. Fantastic, brilliant effort by Alex Hume for Team Malaysia on top of the moment. Let's see where Mexico comes from here. They're currently 13th. Can Salvador Duran get the host nation further up the order? Try and get into the top 10. Yeah, he's up to 8th. Good effort. Yes, 27.257. Again, third segment, fastest lap overall for Mexico. So he's up there, but he's still being outpaced by the youngster at Team France. So uh, that's a, a bit of a surprise when you think how far Salvador Duran has been at many of the tracks we've been to. Ireland down in 20th at the moment. Can they get something here with another flying lap? Well, Ireland have not improved their 20th. Canada went through there, it's still 19th. So both Canada and Ireland really struggling with their sister, our engineering sisters, I should say, are much, much further up the grid. That is astonishing, and, uh, well, hopefully they'll find the, an answer to that later on. Team Netherlands struggling a little bit compared to their practice performances. They're down in 16th place currently. Checkered flag is out on this session, and I think all have finished their runs. Malaysia stay on top from Great Britain and Germany, and Portugal, France, the United States, John, they've popped up to six, and that's sort of gone by the by. We didn't really see that. We didn't lap. catch that lap of Jonathan Somerton, and that's another very strong lap, 127.3. 6-3, so the young American driver on the third row of the grid alongside the young French driver. We've got the slightly more mature Portuguese driver on the second row of the grid over the young German driver, and on it goes. But it is actually, at the end of the day, maturity and experience from Malaysia, Alex Jung, who has consolidated and, in fact, further rubbed salt into everybody's wounds by benefiting by a 1.133 second advantage after three segments of qualifying. And it'll either be, in my view, Great Britain or Germany, there's still a possibility, a very faint possibility, we could see the Netherlands nudge into the top six. They're way down in 16th place, but their second and third qualifying runs have been way off the pace that they achieved in the first one. But don't discount the Netherlands getting a top six starting position. Right, that's one to watch for, but at the moment, there's no doubt about uh, Kingpin here. It is Team of Malaysia and Alex Jung, who has set a series of blistering times around this Mexico City track. He loves the place, obviously. They've got a great setup, and it's Malaysia on provisional pole from Great Britain in second place. Germany in a fine third with their new driver. Portugal in fourth, France with the youngster there in fifth, and USA, another youngster, Jonathan Summerton a great return from the accident in Durban. Australia with their new boy up in seventh place ahead of Mexico, Italy and Indonesia, some more regular campaigners. And then we've got South Africa, China, New Zealand. What is going on for New Zealand? Down in 13th place, only ahead of Brazil, the Czech Republic, the Netherlands who do, as you say, have one good time in the bank and they need another one coming up. India as well down, so is Switzerland. Then we've got Canada, Ireland, Lebanon and Pakistan. There's still plenty of work to do for some of those teams. Well, this is a fun qualifying session, but you can't doubt the man who's on top. It is Alex Young for Team Malaysia. Really, now, as you said, it's about the battle for second place. But GBR, with that tremendous race pace they showed in practice this morning, they'll be relatively happy with where they are. Oliver Jarvis in his first ever qualifying run, potential front row start. Yes, and of course, same for Christian Vettorz for Germany. And there's just a tenth of a second over the three qualifying segments between Germany in third, Great Britain in second. So, literally, the front row of the grid, I think it's locked up from Malaysia the pull position but the second position on the front of the grid is open for grabs between principally Great Britain and Germany 
It, don't discount Portugal. They've got a good run in that first segment, 1 minute 27.3, but I think they would need to dig deep, probably get into the 1 minute 26s if they're really going to challenge for that front row grid position. Another great run by Portugal. I know he's got more experience than some of those around him, but nonetheless, uh, Alvaro Parent, who hasn't been in the car for a while until he came back in Durban last time, has performed well. He's fourth quickest at the moment, and uh, we could perhaps expect to see more from him. Uh, Mexico, they did jump up to eighth there, but still some work to do for Salvador Duran. We've got the experienced Enrico Toccacello for Italy in a slightly threatening ninth place. Uh, again, he's got a couple of good times in there, but the question is, can he get one more blistering lap in to move further inside the top ten? And Indonesia certainly have made that step. Uh, Durban was better, and again, they're tenth currently at the moment. Well, he was saying he's some 24, 28 kilometres per hour quicker in that final turn uh, than, than uh, Alex Young for Team Malaysia. Well, if he is, he must be losing a bunch of time, but we have Alex Young on pole position. We've got and under Mikel down in 10th place, and it's that 10th place for Indonesia that must give them some show of promise. Well, plenty to look forward to as we prepare now for that final 15-minute segment of qualifying. Beautiful weather conditions. We're all set to go for the final segment of qualifying here at uh, the Emano Rodriguez circuit. Let's get down to the pit lane and join Lee McKenzie. Christian, you must be very happy with how things are going so far. Yeah, I had a little mistake now in the second uh, session, so um, position two is possible. Well, good luck for the next one. Thank you. There you are. That's our first opportunity, really, to hear from our new German driver, Christian Vitoris. Uh, short but sweet, and uh, he's, a, he's only going to be 18 years old next week. He's a real youngster. I think he might get a razor for his birthday because I'm sure he doesn't shave. <laughs> it is amazing how these youngsters come into this series and, and perform at such a high level. And, uh, you know, I was looking at the, at the notes, John, and uh, looking over the two seasons of A1GP we've had, with a few drivers joining in this time, we've now breached the 90 drivers mark in A1GP over less than two seasons. It just shows you this series brings so many new drivers into a high level of international motorsport it's done that but I think what really is the key is the fact that this is a sport about nations it's not about individual drivers or drivers within teams and of course you can mix and match any number of different drivers either as rookies or as your permanent seat and uh, if you don't like the shape or the size of one driver you can say right we'll get another one and of course many drivers come for take for example in the case of, of Lebanon Alan Kodir who is Lebanese but he actually probably was born in Brazil of a Lebanese family so you've got a little bit of license and where in fact the driver of a nationality may actually have been born as long as his parents are of originally of that origin of that uh, nationality yes the onboard camera with mexico and of course the, the uh, feet are not on the pedals at the moment because he's sitting in pit lane that's right so uh, a great camera it's one of the best cockpit shots that i think i've ever seen and, and interesting to watch how the feet of salvador duran literally modulate the pedals and again the use of the both of the brake and the throttle. He's using brake and throttle through the S's around the back of the circuit. He wants to keep the engine on song, particularly here where we're losing a lot of horsepower due to altitude. So you can keep the engine up on the rev range, but just check the speed by left foot braking. It, it can be a help to you. There's Jonathan Summerton, the youngster driving for Team USA. Drove well in Durban, but then crashed out. Little mistake that he made, and it just caught him out. That was his first race meeting as a driver. He'd raced as a, or competed as a rookie, which meant he just did the Friday morning sessions uh, in several events. But showing well again today, he's only 18 years old. He's only competed really in the Euro Series F3 Championship in the past, and yet he's performing well here. Currently sixth quickest for the United States. Once again, Noor Ali for Pakistan, out on track, and it's coming up to the corner that caught him out in the third segment. So he keeps the car a lot closer. In fact, he adds, decides to ride the curb a little bit just to make sure he has got the car where he wants it. Oh, 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 no, be very careful. You did it wrong, and a corner, a couple of corners ago, you could have got caught there again. So on his out lap, swings through turn 13, he pulls another gear probably into fifth gear and the run up into turn 14. Yeah, he's actually on his hot lap already because he went out pretty early on in this session, so he's going to finish off his hot lap. Uh, before he had that incident in the third segment, he'd actually been on a fairly even footing with Lebanon. I think this won't really allow him to challenge Lebanon any further. Let's just see as he comes across the line. He does a 131. In fact, that's his slowest lap of the three he's yeah, done. Yeah, I mean, I suspect that uh, the set of tyres that he was on in, in, in the segment three with the one that he lost the time for, during that spin, so the best of the tyre has been used up. And of course, when you spin a car and the fresh set of tyres, they lose that edge very quickly. Nice new tyres on the Australian car, though. Big shine from those. 
And Ian Dyke, who's already seventh on the grid. Good opportunity, perhaps, if he's got some new tyres there to move up. The best they've qualified this year is actually sixth. So uh, if they could do better than that, that would be something pretty special. Yes, and that was... Uh, that was uh... Yeah, it was Ryan Briscoe, Ryan I think. Briscoe, indeed, yeah, who did that. He's gone on to other, other race series. So, good opportunity for Australia. Their previous fastest was in that first sector, 1 minute 27.4. So, Ian Dyke, who's not afraid to turn the steering wheel and open the throttle and, and, and literally just wring its neck, he's not afraid to go on the grass. And now I understand that he was a motocrosser. No wonder he rides the grass all the way down the pit straight. He's familiar with it. Yeah, he feels more comfortable doing that, I think. Well, let's see whether he can improve on seventh position. It is a great effort from Ian Dyke. It's going to boost the morale in the Australian team hugely. Uh, for once, they're ahead of their big rivals, New Zealand, of course, and quite a few places ahead because New Zealand down in 13th. Well, that really, I think, is probably the surprise overall in this qualifying session so far. And uh, we don't really understand why, other than there has maybe been a change in track conditions there. It is Johnny Reed. You can see the look of perplexion on his face as he talks to the team on the pit wall and wondering what have we done wrong, where have we gone wrong? I mean, they've been so much on top of running pretty much all through the series. Chris Gorn, the engineer who works directly with Johnny Reed, talking to him. And, uh, you know, it's, all the chips are down now and you've got to get out and perform. They have a good relationship, those two. So, you know, if uh, any pairing can work it out, I'm sure they will. There's uh, some, well, briefly, that was Jean-Carl Vernet sitting in his car. We go to another blue, white and red car, the Czech car of uh, Yanis Yarak. Uh, or Yarek Yanis, I should say, Yaroslav Yanis, and he's doing well, uh, but they'd like to find a bit of pace. He's qualifying in a provisional 15th currently. Now, here we go. How here. wide? Oh, he's a bit less wide that well, time. I was going to say, here comes our grass tracker, motocrosser Ian Dyke, and uh, runs down this long 1.1 kilometre straight. You sit in the car, you think, when is it ever going to end? And, uh, well, eventually it does come to an end. You've got breaking markers at 250, 200, all the way down into 50 metres. And I suspect that Ian Dyke, along with many of the others at the front of breaking, probably around about 100 metres. And uh, well, he didn't need to do that, though he kept it very much in check. And again, on the exit of turn three, lets the car run slightly wayward. So maybe a case of maybe overdriving rather than just doing what he did so supremely in those first three segments to get himself up to seventh quickest overall. Yeah, but he does attack, and that's what it's good to see. It's good to see him really give it a go. He does make the odd mistake. But that's because he tries hard, and uh, you can't uh, blame him for that. He looks pretty neat and tidy through what's called the hairpin. It is, as you said, sort of double right, but taken as one corner. And now he's out through the first of these sweepers. Looks as though there was a touch of understeer in that first one. Well, it's just a question of whether this is a, the new set of tyres and the balance that you get with the new set of tyres over the tyres that you ran in the previous sun. I mean, engineers' teams are worth 1.6 seconds away. Teams and drivers are working very closely. They're making changes all the time. Look at that, right on, out of a 13, way, way out to the right. He's not too far off, though, you know, he had a very good first sector time, and then uh, if he's 1.6 off, that might just move him up a place or two. He needs to improve on his current fastest of 27.4 to see any improvement, so we wait and see what he does. It's going to be 127, but it's a 27.890. No, so despite his best efforts there, and he, of course, he did kick the dust up a little bit on that last corner, I'm glad to say, but he didn't improve on seventh place. No, Nonetheless, I, good effort from Yes, it was, Dyke. but that little bit of slipping and starting going through turns two and three shaved away those tenths of a second, so I doubt whether he was going to make any significant inroads into the journey of the top four, but he could have maybe sneaked up to seventh, or his seventh, up to sixth, certainly putting USA under pressure. Here's an Ander Mikulop, one of the bravest drivers out there. He loves these fast corners, and he's coming into one now, the last right-hander. Peraltada, he's got big commitment, and he's right down to the inside there. Well, no wonder he's quick round it, because he's using the pit lane entrance as part of the racetrack. He gets the car almost hugging the barrier in the early part of the corner. He stays 10th, though. There's no improvement on the lap, despite his best efforts. Nonetheless, that matches his best if he can hold on to 10th. Just depends if the likes of South Africa, China, New Zealand behind him actually do improve in this final qualifying segment. Sun has come out a little bit more. It is a bit brighter, could be a bit warmer now. Well, here's the provisional pole sitter. He's down at the end of the straight. Watcher Alex Schung negotiates his way around turns one. Let's see in turn two, no wasted energy. A bit of understeer in the middle of turn two, but nothing that's really going to be critical to consolidation of his provisional pole. Lovely exit, though. He was on the kerb, but the forward momentum always dragging him out of the corner. And now he's into this sequence, the left and then the right. Try and keep it tidy. Slightly wide coming through that turn four. Let the car get a little bit too much to the centre of the road. But nevertheless, Alex Jung has got so much in hand that he doesn't really need to try particularly hard. And uh, he hops a bit over the kerb. 
gather that he is on the used set of tyres, which is pretty much as we expected. Yes, it is, and I think we'll, we'll see this will be the slowest of the four runs that Alex Young has competed in this afternoon, but he's got that advantage. He established it in the first qualifying segment, consolidated in the second and third, and really just sitting back and, and keeping a weather eye on what everybody else is doing. But really, to me, he's unchallenged for pole position for tomorrow's sprint race. Absolutely, he's in great shape, goes past the Indonesian car, cuts back to take the pit lane entry here. And uh, Malaysia keeps it quite wide. Notice how he doesn't get down over that white line. Quite a different line chosen very, by very him. Very much so, but uh, let's see what he does. Across the line then, he's on pole already. This won't, of course, uh, stretch his advantage any further, and that's down in the 128. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I mean, it didn't look anything at the level that we saw in those first three uh, segments. So let's look again and see Alex Young. This is in turn four. That's where I thought he missed the corner completely. There you can see suddenly gets lots of lock on. Look how dirty the racetrack is. That's rubber that's been sh literally shredded off the turf of the tyres. We're going to see lots more of that come into play in Sunday's two events. He's on for a potential improvement here is Team China, Hopin Tong. He's down in uh, 12th place at the moment. This could be an improvement. Let's see if this it does bring them up. Yes, 10th position. Good effort by Hopin Tong. Not, not quite as fast as that, but just a few hundredths of a second away if you watch South Africa. So South Africa currently in 12th place, directly behind Indonesia. They were displaced, displaced by China, who've taken that 10th, 5th row grid position. This is going on to his hot lap. This is right at the start of it. So a little bit of a lock-up on the right front. Yes, just, don't think again, it just gets the power on. He's hard on the throttle. He's very aggressive in a way that he puts the throttle pedal. He doesn't squeeze it. He just slaps it open. And they got a bit of an oversteer coming through the exit of turn one. No doubting his courage either. He's got a few cars further ahead of him, but hopefully that won't cause a problem in the next sequence of corners. Don't really want to catch anybody at this section. Well, he's got the Netherlands, I think, directly ahead of him, and that's probably on an outlap, so he's not really going to want to get into play with these cars as he comes into the S. As the Netherlands car, I think, pulls over and lets South Africa go through. Yes, in fact, that's what's happened. Yeah, no, China, China coming in. Yeah, so Netherlands. The China car get out of the way. Yeah, that's right. Netherlands didn't improve on their final run, by the way. They're still down in 16th, so they were never able to add to that first uh, lap time they did. And that's another strange performance along with New Zealand. The Netherlands' second pick is this morning. Renga van der Zender, who will start the sprint race, then hand the car over to Jerome Legemann for the feature race. They're really kicking up the dust coming out of turn 13 now. All trying to gain just a few hundredths of a second. Zao for South Africa here through the final corner. Can this bring him back up a little bit? He's in 12th position. I'm not sure it's going to be enough to move ahead of uh, Indonesia and China. Oh, yes, he does actually squeaks into 10th place. So that was a very useful lap by Adrian Zhao. Well, that, I think, is what he really needed to do. Here we go on board with Christian Vitoros. Again, running behind his sister, not really nation, but engineering nation, let's put it that way. So New Zealand, and this is certainly going to affect Germany because he will be affected aerodynamically and also just sat simply by having a car directly ahead of you does have a, a concentration factor. Can Germany reclaim that second 26 spot? 26 eight. They have. Germany goes second with Christian Vitoris and the team clapping there because they've got another superstar amongst them. I mean, he's the only driver so far of those that we've seen in qualifying for segment four to have gotten into the 126. The 26, 8 to 8. That is a stunning run from the young German. And I mean, you can see on the pit lane the German team absolutely over the moon. But contrast that with New Zealand, who are now on their right lap. Well, it'll be a long pole face Johnny Reid if he can't get into a low woman in 26 to try and drag something out of his qualifying. Here we go. Well, we're just going to look at it into turn four. So, unfortunately, back into the pit lane with Mexico who are preparing to uh, go out for their final run. 17-year-old Christian Vitoris of Germany. New tyres there on Mexico as he heads out of pit lane, but what a, what a run from Germany. Their second currently, they've reclaimed that spot from Great Britain. New tyres also for Great Britain, so this is going to be a battle between Great Britain and Germany once again. Germany sees the advantage with that stunning moment at 76.8. Oliver Jarvis, who's been right on it all weekend. Oh, Johnny Reid flirts again, coming out of turn 13. And it must be a really difficult situation for New Zealand. There's no time coming. This car has been absolutely magnificent up until the qualifying segment, and it's just gone away from them. What has happened to New Zealand? I'm not sure. He's going to cross the line. It's not going to be a big improvement. Nah, he stays 14th on a 127.845. It's the first time he won't start on the first two rows of the grid. And that lap was almost the second, a fraction of a second, two seconds slower than Germany. Astonishing. Don't understand it at all. Malaysia 
are happy, they don't mind. Alex Hume, got a smile from him. He's in a very commanding position, but it's the battle for second that we're focused on. Switzerland away down the order. Marcel Fassler really finding it a little bit of a tall order to get to grips with the car here in Mexico City this weekend. Yeah, sliding it through turn four, the whole four wheels were sliding. At least it wasn't one end or the other, it was a, a complete four-wheel slide, but of course that indicates that overall you haven't got, you're not generating the grip that you need to, particularly as you go through this technical section of the circuit. Quick note, John, Brazil have finally brought something here because Bruno Junqueira for Brazil popped up in a sixth place, much more uh, the sort of form we were expecting from him, and he's delivered in the final segment. Certainly did, and uh, that makes up for that disappointment. Oh, oh dear me, running right out and too far, Marcel Fassler for Switzerland, really almost had four wheels on the grass before he exited turn 13. Well, he's uh, been racing touring cars in recent years. He's used to using lots of grass and curb. Let's see how oh, he comes out, runs it right to the edge, but will it improve his position? Just one place, he goes up to 18th. So Switzerland across the line, but that's not where they're accustomed to the starting. And USA's had an off. And GB's on, oh, so USA indeed, I beg your pardon. Looking at the blue and white and red, we've got three cars with those colours because uh, Great Britain are out on track, or going out on track, France is going to go out, and this is the USA. So USA can do nothing now, they're going to be at best in seventh place on the grid. So it's about what Mexico can do. Uh, Mexico on a hot lap, getting held up there, I'm afraid. That's going to cost them, I think. Great Britain also on a hot lap. And I wonder whether Great Britain can reclaim that second place from Germany. France are looking pretty good for fourth at the moment, with uh, Portugal behind them as well. So we're still on board with Salvador Duran, but a little bit of breakup around the back of the circuit as he comes up to these final two corners that lead on to the back of the straight. As we go back to Team GBR and Oliver Jarvis, he's got to do it if he wants to put his car back up onto the front row of the grid to deplace Germany. Christian Vitoris. Not sure he's doing quite enough here, looking at the times coming through on the sectors. I'm not sure it's quite, but, but wait and see, because uh, we're looking at the sector times compared to Malaysia's time. That's not so relevant. What is relevant, and how does it compare to Germany's time? He's trying to get second place back. Can Great Britain get back onto the front row here, or will it go to Germany? Cross the line, he goes. What's the time? Waiting, yo, he stays third. And Germany, the new driver for Team Germany, has held on to second place. Well, that's an outstanding performance from basically the front two rows of the grid, Mexico. We didn't see that time. Mexico has put themselves onto the second row of the grid, fourth quickest. So Salvador Duran, in spite of getting held up around the lap with a car in turn six, has done what the crowd have come here to support Mexico. They're in with a big shot in the sprint race. Second row of the grid, they'll start directly behind Germany in the front row. Well, it's so close in that section of the grid. Salvador Duran found just enough there to move up to fourth and displace France and Portugal. But that, well, they needed that so desperately. This was the uh, area of the track on which he got held up. And in fact, I suppose that wasn't a bad effort. He dived down the inside, probably didn't lose him too much time as a result of the American car doing well to move out of his way. So Jonathan Summerton did do well. In fact, Summerton didn't complete his lap, interestingly, so he didn't get a fourth segment time in. Let's just quickly take you through what's happened there. Malaysia dominating qualifying. Germany, the nation that leads the points and who David Sears said earlier to me, we'd well, be very happy if their new driver qualified somewhere in the top six. They've qualified second. Great Britain, a superb third with Oliver Jarvis completing his first ever qualifying session in A1. And Mexico, host nation, dragging out a performance that the crowds will really support when it comes to Sunday's race. They're going to start on the second row. France and Portugal due to start on the third. Let's take a more detailed look at it then. You've got Malaysia and Germany up front with Great Britain and Mexico on, a, on the second row. Then the third row, we'll see France and Portugal together. And the fourth row, after a late surge there by Brazil, Bruno Junqueira will start seventh head of the United States, near as they get to home. And that was great stuff from Jonathan Summerton. Ian Dyke for Australia, a good strong ninth ahead of Enrico Toccicello for Italy. Then behind them, we've got South Africa and China. On the seventh row, we'll see Indonesia and amazingly, New Zealand. On the eighth row, it'll be the Czech Republic and the Netherlands, and then India and Switzerland. Row number uh, 10 sees Canada and Ireland, and at the back, we'll have Lebanon and Pakistan. Well, it was a great qualifying session once again. I know Malaysia had the advantage throughout, but superb battle for second place between Germany and Great Britain. And suddenly Mexico, uh, I'm not quite sure how they managed to do that. They were so consistent throughout their times. It was that 1 minute 27.2 they did in the third segment of qualifying that really helped 
Team Mexico, and he was able to back that up with a 127.4 in the final segment of qualifying. So well done to Salvador Duran. He's withstood the pressure of being the home race starter, and that, starting on the second row, means he has a great chance of a podium finish in both sprint and feature races, and that'll keep his fans happy. So France in fifth place on the grid with their new driver, Jean-Claude.